So good morning, everyone. We'll just go ahead and give a couple of seconds of those for that are still logging in, and then we'll get ahead and get started briefly. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started now. Thank you for your patience. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jose Luis Barajas, and I am the Program Assistant for Building Business Back. Building Business Back is a program of the County of Monterey in partnership with the Monterey County Business Council. This workshop is free to you because the County of Monterey has dedicated funding to supporting our businesses. Before we get started today, I want to welcome our interpreter, Maricela Quesada. Maricela, if you could unmute yourself. All right, thank you for that introduction, Maricela. So for those of you that missed that, Maricela is our interpreter. If you need to access the interpretation into Spanish, please hit the globe icon at the bottom of your screen and switch over to Spanish and she'll be over interpreting for our Spanish speaking uh, participants over there. Up next, I'd like to invite Mountary County District 4 Supervisor, Wendy Ruafsky, who's joining us via Zoom. Hi, and uh, thank you, um, Jose, for the, the warm introduction. And thank you to the Business Council for creating this space that is so absolutely important um, as we work to recover um, from uh, the COVID pandemic, the funding that the County of Monterey um, dedicated to uh, supporting this uh, this work uh, really came from uh, the federal government with the ARPA um, COVID uh, recovery dollars. And the County Board of Supervisors um, unanimously um, made uh, the decision to invest a fairly decent amount of our ARPA funding into supporting small businesses. And as uh, someone who uh, started and built my own small business here in Monterey County prior to um, coming to work with the county, um, it is so important to have the support, uh, especially to recover from uh, the impacts uh, that the COVID pandemic had on our small businesses. 
Um, I just want to say that, you know, your success as our local small business community um, is what makes Monterey County so vibrant and diverse and uh, the place that we love to call home. Um, we have an incredible lineup of speakers here with us today. Um, there are quite um, there are many resources available, and I know it takes uh, time and energy to figure out what you qualify for, but the work that the Business Council is doing with our Building Business Back program is really intended to uh, pull all those resources together so that um, it's as easy as possible for you and your business to um, apply for and to secure every single dollar um, of resources that are available to you. Um, again, your success Success is our success, and our commitment is um, is clear. We want we want the we want our small business community to thrive, um, and so I just want to say thank you for joining us today. Thank you to the business council and the building business back team for pulling these resources together. Um, if there is additional information or resources or questions that you as our small business community have, um, take advantage of this resource that's uh, funded through the county uh, to make sure that you're accessing every every bit of support and um, of, uh, government and nonprofit and associated uh, uh, resources that, 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 that are possible so you can build, build your business to be everything that you dreamed it to be um, and our entire community will benefit as a result. So thank you so much much for joining us today and I'll uh, pass uh, the floor back to Jose. All right, thank you Supervisor Askew for that introduction to our program. So today's workshop will focus on the various forms of disaster relief available to our businesses and we have invited several organizations to present on their respective relief programs and provide their expertise on disaster recovery for businesses. That being said, I'd like to welcome our first presenter, Andrea Valdez, with the California Department of Insurance. Hello, let me just go ahead and share my screen. Just give me one moment, please. Okay, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. So my name is Andrea Valdez, and I'm an outreach analyst for the California Department of Insurance. Thank you for the opportunity of being able to present today. So I am actually, um, I take care of most like SoCal, San Diego, but I'm excited to be speaking to Monterey County. I used to live there. absolutely loved it. So I just want to start off by saying a big thing with the California Department of Insurance is that we do not uh, sell insurance. So we regulate all lines of insurance, including homeowners, auto, life insurance, and many more. We also regulate the insurance companies, agents, and brokers that sell insurance. So in California, insurance companies collect over $340 billion in annual premiums, and that's what you and I pay in premiums. Your current elected insurance commissioner, Ricardo Lara, ensures that insurers are solvent, consumer complaints are addressed in a reasonable manner, and insurers and licensees are playing fairly in the marketplace. Everything we do at CDI is to protect consumers from fraud and abuse. So what can we do for you, the consumer? Anytime you have a question about insurance, contact us. If you're shopping for insurance and want to know more, visit our website. If you're denied a claim or coverage, your agent or insurance company not contacting you back, calls and file a form of complaint. The biggest thing is that we're here to help you. On our website, we have educational information about every insurance. We have resources, phone numbers uh, for every insurance company. You can look up your agent or broker to make sure they are licensed. We also have tools to assist you. And I will put that website at the um, end. It's also here on the slide. It's insurance.ca.gov. So we're really the before the disaster situation insurance. So as I mentioned before, we don't sell insurance, we regulate it, we protect you and your business. Um, so this is how we can help your business. Our, gadget, our government agency, again, is going to help you before you sign your policy um, and if you feel your claim is not being honored. So our business community, our department has created a small business guide to commercial insurance, which can be found on our website. And I will link everything after this in the chat. Um, but the informational brochure will provide detailed information on the introduction to commercial insurance, how can you purchase this commercial insurance, what to expect from a broker agent who specializes in commercial insurance, 
What kind of insurance? This is a big one that you need to purchase for your business. Property insurance, um, inland uh, marine, and then also crime. And then for casualty insurance, you have commercial automobile, commercial general liability, commercial umbrella, workers' compensation, and more. So the most common question we see from business owners is what is a business owner's policy? This policy is designed specifically for small businesses. A business owner's policy is a combination commercial policy that covers property, general liability, and business interruption. It is written with strict underwriting guidelines, including maximum, maximum allowable square footage for office, retail, or apartment risks. Um, APOP, we love acronyms at the California Department of Insurance, is most appropriate for small Main Street businesses, such as hardware stores, barbershops, greeting card shops. Um, so discuss the option of a BOP with your broker agent as a premium for qualifying businesses can be very competitive. When selecting the policy that best fits your business model, I was just taking the time to review online guide before you speak with an agent because you'll be ready to ask the right questions. You always want to ask the right questions before something happens. And if you're not sure if you have everything covered in your policy, call us at our 1-800 number to have your plan reviewed by one of our experts at the California Department of Insurance. Um, I know a big thing going on right now, um, especially in Monterey County, is businesses experiencing non-renewals or cancellations. There's an additional information on that, and that's the California Fair Plan. As part of, um, so Commissioner Laura, as part of this ongoing effort to help California businesses across all sectors continue to operate, um, he took action in this in 2021 by amending the Fair Plan, known as the insurer of a last resort, by ordering the Fair Plan to implement his mandated increases to fit um, its decadal commercial property coverage limits offered to businesses. These actions increase um, the combined coverage limits for the fair plan under its division one commercial property program from 4.5 million to 8.4 million and under its division two business owner program from 3.6 million to 7.2 uh, million. So these coverages limits have not been raised since at least 1997. Um, respectively, despite the consumer price index showing costs have nearly doubled during that time in California. So another big thing um, that businesses can call us about is workers' comp. I'm just going to lightly touch on this, but workers' comp um, insurance is the oldest insurance program in the United States. In fact, it's older than Social Security. So what are the benefits um, in a workers' compensation policy? Depending on circumstances of the injury or illness, Injured workers are entitled to specific benefits as instructed by workers' compensation insurance. And again, this can be after a disaster too, you know, workers' compensation, anything like that. Um, so the CDI primarily deal, deals with rating and underwriting issues involving workers' compensation insurance. Consumers can contact CDI with a variety of workers' compensation rating and underwriting concerns. And then we're going to go ahead and take a look at insurance fraud. So our department workers' compensation insurance fraud program. So in California, workers' compensation insurance is a no-fault system. So injured employees need to not prove an injury with someone else's fault in order to receive injury, um, excuse me, in order to receive workers' compensation benefits for an on-the-job injury, in addition to medical expenses being covered for injured employees. Some injured workers are entitled to recover a portion of lost wages resulting from the injury. Fraudulent workers' compensation claims can be enticing and target for criminals. Um, so workers' compensation insurance fraud occurs in simple and complex schemes that often require difficult and lengthy investigations. Employees may exaggerate or even fabricate injuries. At the other end of the spectrum, though, um, white collar criminals, including doctors and lawyers, entice pay and conspire with others to defraud the system by creating false or exaggerated claims, over-treating, and over-prescribing harmful and addictive drugs. Insurance companies pick up the tab, passing the cost on to policyholders and the general public. Um, if you think this is something, again, and you expect any type of fraud, please contact our department. And then here's the big one here, filing a complaint so that request for assistance. CDI is committed to protecting your rights. Many questions can be answered over the phone. If you are un unable to resolve the issue over the phone, um, you have an option of filing a request for assistance against the insurer or the agent broker by mail or online on our website. 
the system will allow you to attach copies of all necessary documents, such as policies, cancel checks, and correspondence. Um, so again, we are here to help you at CDI. So if any questions about your current insurance policy, new policy, denied coverage, anything after a disaster, you're thinking of fraud, please, we're here to help you. And then also one thing I did, and I will also put on the chat, um, due to the recent floods, we did have the Disaster Relief Center open. It was in Spreckles, but now it is at the Monterey County Government Center. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that um, in the chat as well. I'm going to put in a couple things in the chat. Thank you for letting me present today. And again, we're here to help you at the California Department of Insurance. Thank you, Andrea, for your presentation. <laughs> Up next, we're going to invite Ms. Karina Torres with the California Department of Tax and Fee Administration. Hi, thank you so much for having me. My name is Karina Torres. I am with the California Department of Tax and Fee Administration. Um, can we go to the slides, please? Thank you so much. All right, next slide. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, our primary goals as the agency, um, disaster relief, and um, I'm open for any questions um, that you may have. Next slide, please. So my name again is Karina Torres, and I am a technical advisor for the chief of our tax policy bureau at the California Department of Tax and Fiat Administration, CDTFA. I have worked for the department for over 15 years and have held various roles specifically in the auditing field. One of my many roles is being a disaster coordinator at the agency. I work very closely with the department sponsors to determine and provide disaster relief for tax and fee payers. Uh, next slide, please. Our primary goals of CDTFA is to ensure and to make sure to make the life better for Californians by fairly and efficiently collecting the revenue that supports our essential public services. Next slide, please. So generally, if you are selling a taxable tangible item, you must register with a seller's permit with CDTFA taxpayers with a return due between January 4th and January 31st may request an extension online by using our online services portal verbally by calling us or in writing. Per section 6459, extensions are provided by giving the taxpayer an additional three months to file returns. If filed by the extended due date, then no additional interest or penalties apply. Online requests are automatically approved for the taxpayers who reported less than 1 million in tax on their prior reporting period. So this is mostly going for um, the smaller business owners. Extension requests from taxpayers who reported over a million dollars in tax will follow normal procedures before granting or denying the disaster extension. So this doesn't necessarily mean that you will be denied. It just means that you go over, um, you can submit your request and one of our team members will take a look at it um, and determine if it's approved or denied. Next slide, please. All right, so going over collections. Um, so with we have levies, EWOs, and liens. So um, our normal course of business is we have automated um, levies and EWOs, earnings withholding orders, and liens that are automated in our system. Um, due to the current disaster, we are turning them off for 30 days. So it's temporarily for this covers everyone. Um, however, manual levies and EWOs are still allowed, but every attempt to talk to the taxpayer and to confirm that the taxpayer was not affected by the storm 
um, is being taken and documented into the system before any collection action is initiated. Next slide, please. And if the taxpayer missed the filing deadline, which was um, two days ago on January 31st, um, they may file a CDTFA 735 or CDTFA 735A online or by mail. So this is um, the 735 is a form specifically requesting relief for penalty or interest. And due to recent legislation and issuance of the governor's state of emergency, section 6592 and section 6593, CDTFA has authorized to accept relief request without a signature under penalty of perjury. So this means that you are able to submit a request without your signature. It's no longer necessary. And we have updated our forms to reflect um, that new update. Um, next slide, please. And that is it. So thank you so much for having me. I am open to any questions. You're more than welcome to contact our customer service. We're open uh, Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. Um, by calling, it's 1-800-400-7115. Uh, and my email is karina.torres at cdtfa.ca.gov. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Karina, for that presentation. Up next, we will have uh, County Executive Director for the Farm Service Agency, Ms. Vivian Sofa. Hi, thank you for being here today. Um, the next slide, please. So we help people in the business of agriculture. Next slide. There we are. Thank you. Um, so um, basically what we can do is help farmers or ranchers, does, regardless of what size, small businesses, medium-sized businesses, large businesses, rehabilitate farmland and conservation after the flood. We have specific practices that we cost share on. Um, so the farmer corrects the damage, and then we cost share with them on doing that damage. There are specific rates related to debris removal, laying tents repair, and irrigation systems primarily. Next slide, please. And the land eligibility is based on site inspections. So a site inspector will come look at the damage, um, document what you need, and then we will approve the applications and you can do the work that you're required to do on the land. Um, we pretty much all commercial farming and ranching, nursery, grazing for commercial livestock, conservation structures. Um, we don't fix conservation problems that existed before the Next slide, please. So what we're doing right now is the, our field office here in Monterey County is applying for the approval of the program. We're trying to get it expedited right now um, because there is an environment, environmental review that's required prior to the start of the practice and we're trying to get a um, expedited uh, process for that. And the project should not be started until you are approved um, the payment limitation in this particular program is $500,000 per person, and there are no income limits for people to apply, and a deadline will be announced later. Next slide. So what you can do right now is document the damage with uh, photographs, videos, what type of work you need, and report to our office. We need to document that you called us, uh, 
get a application signed as quickly as possible. And then we will provide the next step on getting the inspection and what work you can start doing. And I have the contact information for our office. We don't have at this presentation. Next slide, please. So I'm not going to read all these slides because this is a, a these are too much detail probably for this particular meeting, but I do want everyone to know that we have a variety of programs to help with uh, flooding and other uh, disaster events. One of them is we have a program called um, ELAP that helps with feed losses for livestock. There's a lot of detail to the program. If you know anyone who has that or you are a person who has suffered those losses, please contact us. Next slide, please. And the same program applies to honeybees. If you raise bees or have colonies or hives or feed losses, um, you should contact our office right away so we can um, get you to file a notice of loss on those losses. Next slide. Um, this, if you have uh, animal deaths, uh, any kind of livestock deaths because of flooding, and we do have some already reported in the county, um, we have a program for that as well. Please contact our office for that. Next slide. Um, the tree assistance program. So this is a program where if your vines or trees were washed away or damaged, um, we can help with replanting those those crops. Um, it's a cost share program again, where we pay a specific rate per vine or tree and we have specific land preparation rate by acre. Um, you know, all of, a lot of these programs are redundant as far as what is needed before you um, start the program, et cetera. So that's why I'm not reading every slide. So just please contact us if you've experienced this well. So if you know someone that has. Next slide. Uh, we have a, we have an insurance program. Uh, there are two types of insurance with our agency. Uh, one is federal crop insurance is provided by private crop insurance agents, and we cover crops not insured with federal crop insurance. So if you have uh, the non-insured crop disaster assistance on your crop and it was damaged because of the flooding or rain, um, you will need to file a notice of loss to get um, some benefits on recouping the loss of those crops. Uh, we have for socially disadvantaged, limited resource farmers, beginning farmers, veteran farmers. We have um, pretty significant discounts on uh, the premiums on that program. And it's at the basic level, the program is free um, for those folks. So, uh, Again, you have to contact the office. I feel like I keep saying that over and over. Next slide, please. Uh, and we also have emergency loans in some of the counties. So these are low interest loans available for you if you had a lot of damage on your farm. You should have at least a 30% loss uh, on your farm. It's, we have smaller loans, larger loans different options available for you and um, you must be able, not be able to get commercial uh, loans for, it, for this program. We help uh, people that are uh, a little less fortunate um, in that area. And uh, the deadline to apply for loans, we have eight months uh, since the declaration of disaster, which I think was just done for Monterey County yesterday or the day before. Next slide, please. So here's contact information. Um, a really good website is farmers.gov. Lots of information about all of our programs. We have lots of programs. Um, or you can contact me directly on that phone number, or you can email me as well with any questions. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Vivian, for that presentation. That was a lot of great information for our agriculture-based businesses. Up next, we have uh, Marina Camacho joining us with the Monterey County Assessor's Office.
We're going to go ahead and skip over to our next speaker, which is Ms. Barbara Nidis with the United States Small Business Administration. Hello, everyone, and good morning. Um, I represent the U.S. Small Business Administration Office of Disaster and Recovery and Resilience. So I'm here. Do you want me to just share my screen for the PowerPoint? Uh, it's up to you. I can just move it right now. I have it ready. So basically, I just get the word out as far as outreach. Um, and hold on one second. I'll share it right now. See what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. Can you see my screen? I'm sharing your screen. Oh, you are sharing it? Oh, okay. Okay, so I'll just stop sharing mine. Do you want me to stop sharing mine? Okay. Thank you. So basically, I'm here due to the disaster that happened on, on December 27th, the flooding. Um, and continuing. So uh, basically, we're beginning adding on counties as we go. So there's two types of, uh, if you can just go to the next slide. So we just, this is what I was trying to say to you. Uh, we do offer, we offer low interest government loans for businesses of all sizes, homeowners, renters, and nonprofit organizations. So there's two types of uh, declarations. This is currently the presidential, which is we partner with FEMA as far as individual assistance. So uh, businesses um, can get both uh, physical damage loans as well as economic injury disaster loans. Um, and this goes for also homeowners, renters, and uh, nonprofit organizations. Uh, agency declarations, you know, is since we are the government agency, we uh, basically, uh, time of disaster, just SBA, uh, comes in that disaster and offers um, that low interest government loan, like I said, uh, to help homeowners, renters, businesses, and nonprofits. We can go to the next one. We can go to the next slide, please. Oh, there we go. Barbara, it looks like we may have lost them. Can okay. you share, share your slides again? Share That's what I was screen. thinking. So I was just waiting to hear that okay. <laughs> All right, let me go to the next one. And we'll go here. All right. Okay, so can you see my screen? Are we good? Yes. Okay. So basically, like I mentioned, uh, we were mentioning about the, all the information about it's for this program is for the uninsured and underinsured losses, um, as far as basically uh, anybody who has suffered any type of uh, um, uninsured losses, as far as Basically, you're, uh, we cover deductibles on this, uh, no closing costs on the loans. So anybody who is able to or eligible to apply for these loans. We have also a mitigation option as far as these disaster loans. So um, this, is, this is really just to prevent future damage um, as far as uh, additional funds for businesses and help them recover um, in future disasters. So this goes by a case by case basis as there is um, you know requirements but it's part of the application process and this is where uh, like I told you the disaster loan limits 
So for businesses, we offer up to $2 million to repair or place physical damage uh, to inventory, equipment, um, uh, basically uh, also supplies. Uh, economic injury, like I said, if you're closed during the timeline of that uh, disaster, you can get that working capital loan to regain your business back. That's cool. That's including like, uh, you know, electricity issues uh, for home loans. A lot of people do two separate loans. They do the home loan as well as their business. So that's why it's two separate applications. That's why I'm mentioning this. So it's up to $200,000 for that. And then they can get that uh, $40,000 for primary, um, your car and your personal property. And this is where I told you about the uh, economic, uh, which the mitigation, which is up to 20% of your physical, verified physical damage. So they're up to 30 years, these loans. Um, basically, that's the reason why this is just to help everybody recover and give you time to help, at least help pay out you pay off your loan and offering basically low interest to below the market set quarterly. Um, as far as that, uh, uh, when you do insurance requirements for loans is really to maintain your hazard and your flood insurance. Um, that's part of the requirement as far as these loans. Uh, basically, this is one uh, fact. Did you know that one inch of water can cause at least a $25,000 of damage? So to a home or any any type of business. So it's really uh, you can realize how the impact it is when, when it comes to disasters as far as that. But basically, um, that's why we have that's why these loans are required to maintain appropriate hazard and flood insurance to reduce the need of future federal assistance. So our key roles as far as um, we have our federal uh, basically our resource partners. This was with SBDC. Uh, so in the time after that we leave, we have at least other options um, as far as financial, uh, you know, accounting needs or anything that you need. Um, you can go to these uh, resource partners. So basically, I want to give you the fact sheet, at least tell you at least about uh, the deadlines. So basically, anybody that was affected, they have for physical damage, they have March 16th. Uh, for businesses and uh, you know homeowner side, and then they have that economic injury, which is October sixteenth. They can apply online, which is on the bottom right here, a disaster loan assistance. Let me put that here. Disaster loan assistance. Sba. Gov, which is right here on the bottom, and they can call at one eight hundred six five nine two nine five five. They have a one year grace period uh, for uh, pay repayment. So you can just, uh, and zero interest. So this is uh, basically, this is a new thing that's helping everybody um, recover uh, and able to at least repay the loan when it's available. So the interest rates, uh, like I said, uh, mentioned earlier that there is low interest. So it's 3.30% uh, for businesses. And then for nonprofits, it's as low as 2.37. And then the homeowner side, which is 2.31. So that is it from me. Um, they also can go to that uh, local assistance um, outreach center uh, as far as to help anybody who does need that one-on-one. -on -one. Um, speak, they speak also Spanish as well. So any, we can accommodate you there at the uh, 14, um, where the insurance as well as 14, seven, uh, give you the right exact address, uh, Monterey County, as far as that. Um, yeah, if anything else you need from me, I can stop sharing this screen here and I'll post everything on the chat as far as that. I have my phone number there, which I'll put, and also my email if you need anything from me. And thank you. Thank you, Barbara, for that presentation. Up next, we have Mr. Cesar Castro with Cesar Castro Farmers Insurance Agency here in Salinas. Hello, good morning, everybody. How are you today? Hopefully everybody's doing well. <clears throat> so my presentation, if you could uh, switch the screen, please. We'll be talking about a few things regarding insurance and businesses, of course, because we live in a state where insurance and attorneys are always out there looking for lawsuits, uh, we need to protect ourselves. We need to be prepared. We have several things that we want to talk about as far as how we can be prepared in case of a disaster. 
or any other type of event that can affect our business. So what types of things should you ask your insurance company? When should you ask? Why should you ask? And what about price? So these are some of the topics that I'm going to be discussing in the next few minutes. Uh, if you can switch the screen, please. Now, business owners have uh, many different policies that they can possibly need, starting with liability and business owners' policies, which have already been alluded to, work comp insurance, which is, of course, a requirement for business owners that have employees, umbrella insurance, professional liability insurance, flood insurance, which has also been already mentioned, EPLI, health insurance, and disability insurance. Many, many different types of insurance are available. Does every business owner need every single one of them? Possibly not, but sometimes we do need more than what we think we need. Next slide, please. <clears throat> First and foremost, top of the, uh, at the top of the list, we all should understand that no insurance, no company, nothing covers every single thing. There are always exceptions. And of course, insurance contracts are really, really long because they have exceptions to a lot of things that are uh, sometimes people think that they have covered. So first and foremost, we need to understand that. Now, the reason we ask the questions is to find out exactly what we do have in our policy, what we don't have in our policy. And that way, if there's something that we think we need to have, then we need to make sure we are on top of it. Examples for uh, that people sometimes think are covered under the policy are wear and tear type of damage, flood and earthquake, unless you have uh, flood and earthquake insurance, most policies will not cover it. And as we learned a couple of years ago, pandemics are something that are not covered. And of course, pandemics thankfully do not happen every year. We've only experienced them every hundreds of years. So that's why possibly those things are not covered in our policies, but they do occur. Next slide, please. Now, when should you ask? First, first time you meet with somebody that you're thinking of helping you with your insurance. You need to find an agent that will take the time to answer your questions. You will find you will need you should find an agent that will want to do periodic reviews with you. Businesses change, needs change. So when your business expands or possibly contracts, it is a good time to talk to your insurance agent or company. You will be the victim of the loss. So it's important that as a consumer, we are on top of it. Sometimes agents uh, don't get a hold of us to go over things that we should know. So it is incumbent on us as the consumer to make sure that we are on top of our business because of course our business is usually the number one source of our income. Next slide, please. Why should you ask? Well, of course, that can mean the difference between your business surviving or having to close. And then unfortunately, sometimes we do run into people where because this was not done appropriately at the beginning, they can't survive a loss. Also, you want to educate yourself. You want to educate yourself about your protection, what you can expect. That way, when something does go wrong, you're not surprised that, what do you mean I'm not covered? You will also find out that there are some things that your policy will do that you had no clue that it would do. So you want to take advantage of the protection that is available in your policy. That will eliminate or have us lose or uh, limit what potential gaps can exist in our protection. Next slide, please. Now, how you can be prepared. Number one, you want to be prepared as far as what you have in your business. You want to keep records of things. When claims arise, insurance companies will ask for many, many things that will help settle your claim. Uh, tax records, pictures, receipts. Uh, if a business were to be destroyed by a natural disaster, we're really not going to remember everything that was in our business. So records will definitely help. Pictures, videos uploaded to the cloud. That way, if your uh, place of business does get destroyed, you have a backup where you can get them no matter what. And always keep important phone numbers, uh, policy numbers, 
things that are going to be important in the event of a disaster. Tips on what to do as far as buying insurance. Number one, do not buy on price. Uh, although none of us like to pay for insurance, it is an important thing to make sure that price is not the number one uh, determining factor of when you buy insurance, where you buy it. Uh, I have never seen a client that has a loss that is concerned about the price. They're always concerned about what the claim, how and will it, will it be covered. Uh, price is the last thing on their minds with it when a disaster comes along. Also, find out about the claims handling procedures of the company that you're dealing with. Not all companies pay claims the same. Although we do have a Department of Insurance, it can make life much easier when the company that you're dealing with handles claims uh, in a fair manner. And also, taking all of these steps will make it easy for your claims department to play you for your loss. We want to make the process as smooth and as easy as possible. The more documentation that we can provide to them, the easier it is for them to pay us. Next slide, please. Next presenter, then. Thank you so much for your time. All right. Thank you, Sissa, for that presentation. Up next, we have Nicole Pettit with Property Restoration Services. And then after that, we will have Ms. Marina Camacho with the County Assessor's Office. Am I going there? Get me any. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay, perfect. Okay, so my name is Nicole Pettit. I am with Property Restoration Services, Inc. You can go to the next slide. I am the CFO for Property Restoration Services and with my husband, who is the founder, Ronnie Pettit. He's a Marine veteran, which is important I'd like to brag about them. And secondly, um, we're a disabled veteran-owned business. We've been in this industry for about 17 years, worked our way from the bottom up. So we have a lot of knowledge from the ground, um, technicians working in the field, all the way up through the management, uh, working with claims and different disasters that have happened over the years. Um, we are an IICRC certified company, which we'll get into later and why that's important. Um, but Basically, um, it just indicates uh, different firms that are trained and uh, capable of recovering uh, property disasters and restoration. Uh, next slide. So I'm going to go over a couple steps. Some of them um, we're going to go over a little quickly because obviously we've already had the damage. Um, but in the future, should this ever happen again, the first step could always be, in this case, uh, if you're able to stop any further damage from occurring. Um, it just saves your property and it also allows you to basically get ahead of any issues that may come if you're not able, um, if you're able to stop it from occurring further. Contact a restoration professional. This is key because there really is a science behind restoration and dry out. Um, the different categories of water damage that we've seen with the floods recently. Um, absolutely call your, your insurance. Um, typically within the first 24 hours, it's right away. Um, this is key to getting your claim um, started um, and getting any questions that maybe you don't know uh, answered uh, right away. We've already alluded to this in multiple different presentations, but then it's, it's really nothing um, that can help you more than documenting. So if your business, your home was damaged by the storm, by water, by floods, um, the more photos, the more documents you can take of any of that. 
it's also going to bring you to a better position when it comes to the claims process and be able to even allow himself to remember what it is that was damaged both interior and exterior. Next slide. Okay, so just so everyone's aware, there's not there's three different types of, of water damage. Um, and I'm going to quickly go through these. Category one is clean water. So water that you can drink. It's, you know, something that isn't highly contaminated by any means. It's a supply line, a cover sink overflow. And in category two, it's significantly, significantly contaminated. Um, it's called gray water in our industry. It's gently used water, uh, maybe some chemicals, and um, a washing machine overflow would be an example of this. Category three is what we call black water. Now, this is where there is sewage, um, fluid overflow, blood water. And why? Because blood water contains everything that it comes in contact with. So, um, we go into the specifics. I'm sure you can imagine the different things that might be contaminating that water from, you know, sewers to chemicals oil, anything on the roadways that might flood into your home. So those are definitely considered black water uh, category water losses. That's why flood water is something that you need to handle very specifically. Next slide. Um, rebuilding. So again, we're kind of jumping quickly through some of these categories because the damage has already happened and many of us are in the rebuilding phase of it. One of the biggest things that we really strive for people to understand is, is you have to dry out the property completely. Um, if you rebuild or try to skip this step, you're, you're basically presenting yourself with an opportunity to improve the damage, uh, risk of dry rot, structural damage, uh, even mold. So it's extremely important if you've encountered, encountered damage from the floodwaters or from the roof leak or anything um, that content, you really have to make sure that you're drying out your property properly. Mm -hmm. A lot of companies in the restoration world, we use moisture meters you know, to indicate the amount of moisture that is in um, in your property. Um, for example, um, in your home, we'll, we'll do readings and log those and we'll present those to your insurance company to document the drying process. Um, and that's important because we want to ensure that your property or your business is truly dry before any uh, rebuilding occurs. Uh, you may also notice that dehumidifier and fans um, are used in tandem uh, specifically to help with the drying process. Next slide. What's salvageable? Um, you know, when it comes to black water, a lot of, a lot Anything an encounter should should be thrown away. And this item that absorbs contaminated flood water um, definitely uh, shouldn't be restored, and they should be discarded. Examples: your drywall, your carpet pads, mattresses, box springs, uh, particle boards, um, insulation, anything like that that's been in contact should definitely be discarded. And this is where in the restoration industry can really lend a hand because there is there is a proper way to clean, remove, and um, sanitize and handle these overall losses that um, you know most people aren't, aren't experiencing. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Potential for mold. So this is this is definitely one of those categories of water damage that can occur. Um, if something is not properly dried out. And when it's going to it's obviously it's going to heighten uh, the potential for mold, not that it's going to happen, but again, if you don't follow the steps to properly dry out uh, your property, this, it, it's definitely something that can happen. Mold does grow in damp, dark areas. Um, and that's why, again, I keep saying this, that the dry out portion is extremely important. Um, mold is uh, within it, it's organic material, meaning it is going to live 
in your sheet rock and basically eat up any matter, um, organic matter that's in its weight. And so it, it definitely is something that if you can contain it and, and stop it from occurring, that is the best case scenario. And then definitely contact somebody who has experience with mold remediation and or contact us and we can we can help. It's definitely something that you should have a professional help you with. And the next slide. Hiring a professional. So these are just kind of recaps on why it's important. Uh, no matter where you go, make sure that it is somebody with experience and knowledge in restoration and remediation. And it really is important because as you're going through this journey of bringing your property or business back from the damage, understands working with an insurance professional, an adjuster, the claims process. The documentation, um, they should truly really be your in rebuilding what was previously yours um, as quickly as so that way you can get back up and running. Um, and basically, uh, you know, a, a hiring professional is when you get that experience and that, that knowledge. Um, next slide. So, some of the alternatives touched on this, um, but you've heard about them already. So understand your insurance. And as Caesar had mentioned before, do you have flood insurance? That's a good a good thing to know, obviously before, but now it's a good question to ask yourself and if you need it in the future. Do you know what your deductibles are? Um do you know a claim? Have you done that? Um, do you know how to do that? It's definitely important to talk with your CPA or tax preparer um, because there's a lot of receipts. There's a lot of transactions happening during this process. We can definitely help you. Um, we also suggest if it's possible to keep any funds that you receive on your claim in a separate account. It just makes for a much easier uh, accounting when it comes down to uh, your expenses and and divvying those out appropriately. Um, FEMA, obviously, um, we kind of just came on earlier and the SBA. Um, can you qualify for any of this? Whether you're underinsured or uninsured, um, there's definitely different opportunities out there to help you get back on your feet and, and back to business. And next slide. And one of the biggest uh, things that we like to tell anyone in these situations is just be patient with yourself and those helping you and the process because it's definitely something that you're you weren't looking to do, um, but you found yourself in it. Hopefully, you surrounded yourself with people um, that are going to help you to go ahead and, and restore what, what you had previous back to its original condition. Next slide. This is just some information um, if anyone would like to reach out. And I appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, thank you, Nicole, for that presentation. Up next, we have Marina Camacho with the Monterey County Assessor's Office. Give me one second to pull up your presentation. Ready? Good morning, everybody. Thank you for inviting me. I'm Marina Camacho, the Assessor Clerk Recorder, uh, newly elected in, in November. I'm here to talk about the disaster relief as it pertains to the assessment aspect of it, meaning the tax bill that you get annually on a business level. Um, you want to change the next, next slide, please? And the revenue and taxation uh, 170, it does allow for relief for property owners uh, on the business aspect for uh, equipment and fixtures and, and anything that uh, affects the property itself. If, as a business owner, if you don't own the business, the actual improvements, then your calamity, we do have calamity claim uh, that is required. And for the relief, uh, as damage has to be um, at least $10,000. Um, 
and like everybody else has spoken here, it is uh, it does require a process um, for that relief to be applied. This also uh, and the assessment part of it is it helps reduce the tax bill um, for the calamity and the damage that you suffered. Uh, next next slide, please. In order to qualify, what do you need is the, dam the damaged uh, property. In this case, if it's a business, your equipment or your fixtures have to be accessible, meaning that you have to have been paying taxes on it. If it's not accessible, clearly that wouldn't qualify, but you do have you have 12 months to file your claim. As I stated earlier, damage has to be at least $10,000. And for properties that the actual improvement, meaning the business itself, it, it does uh, the value that gets re reduced. Um, any rebuilding is excluded from any additional reassessment. Um, next slide, please. Who can claim it? Who can claim this relief? Uh, well, the property owners of the real property, as I stated, meaning the actual land and improvements, the business equipment or fixtures for those who own a business orchards or other agriculture growers, so those who are uh, on the ag side of it, um, aircraft owners or boat owners, certain manufactured homes. Um, but relief is not available for those mobile homes that are assessed through the state or any personal household furnishings in those uh, state assessed mobile homes. Next slide, please. Important as everybody has stated here is um, the more information you have or documentation that you have to support the value of the property that you're reporting, uh, you know, copies of the estimate of your insurance, that helps us a lot in terms of establishing a value and photos of the damaged property. Um, that's pretty much what we required in addition to an actual claim filing. Uh, next slide, please. This is the claim form that you would be uh, required to file within the 12 month period. Um, it's both in English and in Spanish. Next slide, please. And uh, next slide. That's my presentation. It's very brief because we do have a limited amount of, uh, of a limitation as far as what we can actually assist in in terms of the business aspect of it. It's a large business and you have large assets and equipment and value. Uh, and you suffer the damage, then the adjustment will be probably meaningful for those who are smaller and it's less than 10,000 and may not be as meaningful. But in any case, you can call our office and we'd be happy to help you. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation, Marina. Up next, we will have our Q&A session. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to type them in the chat or raise your hand and we'll get right to you. All right, I do have some questions over here. Uh, the first question is for the Department of Tax and Fee Administration, and the question is, do I have to request for an extension for my taxes, or are they automatically applied? Hi. Um, the, you do have to request an extension. Unfortunately, it's not um, automatic. Um, the deadline to request um, the extension was um, January 31st. How, and that was um, if you would have applied by January 31st, then it was um, an automatic extension. However, since the deadline has passed, um, there's still time. You are more than welcome to um, file a request um, for penalty and interest. Um, again, by doing online or by calling our customer service department or by mail. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. We have an, a, a few more questions over here at the Peninsula Chamber. Uh, an additional question for whoever might be able to answer this. Is there any assistance or grants 
for revenue loss or canceled appointments. And this is specifically, for example, for uh, mental health services businesses. So are there any relief for revenue loss or canceled appointments? So being unable to meet with clients in person due to the storm. Is this potentially something that the SBA might be able to assist with, with an economic injury disaster loan? Well, for economic uh, injury disaster loan, you can use that as far as, uh, but that's the thing you have to pay back. There's no grants, any type of economic loss during that disaster. Okay, thank you for that clarification, Barbara. Uh, an additional question that we have over here at the peninsula is, for all the programs and disaster relief that require a site inspector, is there a charge for the site inspector to come out and assess any damages? As far as the SBA, you know, it's just as part of the process, a loss verifier comes to your business. Thank you. And what about for the Farm Service Agency and no. the Assessor's Office? For the Farm Service Agency, there's no fee for the, the inspection. The assessor said there is no fee either. Thank you. So from the sound of it, there are no fees associated with uh, site inspectors coming out and assessing damages. Uh, additionally, for the Farm Service Agency, how often do programs come up through the Farm Service Agency if they don't qualify for any of the existing programs? Uh, so we have, we probably have at least 25 programs that we run all the time uh, for different reasons. Um, if they don't qualify for this program, they might, they should contact us. There might be some other program they could qualify for. We have right now five new, very active programs that have been rolled out at the same time of the flooding. So um, they should definitely contact us if, if they don't fall within the parameters of the emergency conservation program. Thank you. And then additionally, does the Farm Service Agency locally provide technical assistance with filling out these applications, or will they be directed to uh, another organization to help them file those? No, we will help people fill out applications, and, and we also have a sister agency, the Natural Resource Conservation Service, that, that does help provide other types of technical service in, for example, designing or helping with um, the damage to an irrigation system, but we we make appointments in our office and help people one on one. We are trying to get a disaster relief team into our office right now because we have a very very small office and this is a you know pretty significant disaster. But we help people here at the local level in Salina. Thank you for that. All right, I'll just give a few more seconds to see if we have any more questions coming into our chat. I just want to mention that uh, it's the Monterey County Government uh, Center. So it's 1441 Shillings Place. So everybody knows Salinas. And that's why we're all there um, to help all these people to get that one-on-one. -on -one. It's 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Sunday. All right, so, okay, I don't see any more questions in the chat. So on behalf of the Building Business Back Program, I want to give my thanks to all of our presenters today. I also want to thank our hosts for the physical spaces today, which are the Monterey County Workforce Development Board in Salinas, as well as the Monterey Peninsula Chamber of Commerce in Monterey. Finally, I want to thank the County of Monterey for funding this program. Again, it's free to you because the County of Monterey has dedicated funding to helping businesses recover from the pandemic. If you're interested in learning more, feel free to visit our website at montereycountybusiness.com, where you'll also find this workshop's recording as well as previous workshops we've held. Additionally, all resources mentioned today are also listed under our Disaster Relief Resource tab on our webpage. Our next workshop, the Black Business Summit, will be held on Thursday, February 23rd. 
You can register that for our website, again, under the workshops tab. That concludes our workshop for today. Thank you for joining us and have a great day.